Hello and welcome to week number six. Today we're going to be discussing some nuclear reactors and nuclear bombs and what exactly is going on. So I'm going to preface this by saying can't necessarily make a nuclear reactor at home. However, there have been Boy Scouts that have done it. Uh, for example, this one is a pretty funny example. In the 90s, there was a boy named David Hahn. He was a Boy Scout. He was trying to do his Eagle Scout project and he made a reactor in his shed. Now, he somehow got a hold of plutonium-239, trying to react it into uranium-238. So, he somehow got all the materials to make a core, and Bomb Squad needed to come in, unassemble the whole thing. And, of course, there's going to be copycats, so other attempts were made by teenage physicists to be. So, this is really interesting. Uh, going into it, and now I'm actually going to explain what's going on inside of those reactors. So aside from these bombs being very hard to create at home, and very illegal to create at home, there are a couple different kinds that you can create. So there's atomic bombs, which use heavy chain reactions of heavy elements. So this could be uranium-235, other unstable uranium uh, isotopes are 234 and 238 as well. They don't work particularly as well in a bomb. Uh, usually it would have to be 80% or more of uranium-235 for this to be a correct fission rate. So that's essentially the smashing together and breaking apart of this uranium. So for this chain reaction to work, you need a critical mass, and this critical mass is typically four to five different forms of matter. They're very explosive when placed with the uranium. So it reacts, it smashes, it breaks apart, boom, big bombs. Uh, this would create the pressure, it creates the reactivity, and that would lead to the explosion. So for these to touch, that's when the explosion happens. We try to avoid that while it's in its bomb shell, per se. So, when the bomb is dropped, it is reacted, everything kind of falls into place, and it happens rather quickly, and that's what creates such a devastating blow. Now, hydrogen bombs, on the other hand, they create more of a thermonuclear fission. So, usually they would use deuterium and tritium. They would react with the hydrogen. It's a lithium hydride uh, combination mixture. This is integrated in the nuclear device, or the integrated nuclear device, depending on what source you're finding. This creates the explosion. So for that to touch, that is what would create the explosion in this kind of bomb. So this is also how the sun does it. The sun uses uh, hydrogen and helium as it combusts. I would also like to add that hydrogen bombs can be basically limitless on their power and explosiveness. As such as the fat man and little boy dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, back in 1945 during the World War II, that could have been much worse should they have dropped, let's say, a much larger bomb on those areas. They actually had another one in tow, but then Japan decided that it was going to surrender before that even happened, which is probably for the better. Yeah. Rather than drawing out all of this, I decided that I would pull up an image. So, like I said, we usually use uh, deuterium, tritium, and then we would have our helium or hydrogen core. So, what's going on here is there is a uranium jacket around it, and what happens when those touch of course, creates that critical mass and that explosion. Here's another example of how there are two stages that work together in thermonuclear bombs. Typically, once they touch, then the reactions begin and the explosiveness starts as well. Plutonium-239 can also be used instead of uranium as well. This is the same kind of like outward explosion. Uh, the outer ring is where the nuclear mass would happen. Once they combine, again, explosives, just like in the uranium bomb as well. Interestingly enough, using nuclear power 
as a source of energy as opposed to using fossil fuels, coal, you name it, is actually safer and more reliable as a source of energy. However, there have been a few disasters, namely Fukushima, Chernobyl, like the Pripyat disaster, that everybody knows about and everybody is scared of. However, these reactors would definitely help a lot of people. They create so much more power. I th believe I came across something about the size of a car. So like a small nuclear reactor could power the entirety of, I believe I saw New York. It's really interesting, something to look into. And I'm really hoping in the future that we can kind of harness this power a bit better without it being, you know, scary like everybody thinks it is. And hopefully without using these as weapons of massive destruction.